Hi, everybody. Thank you. That was beautiful. Mothers. Beautiful. Um, I'm so, I uh, feel so honored to be on this issue. And I'm just uh, congratulate the Little Patuxent Review staff for all the incredible work they do. Issue after issue far exceeds anything. Um, so thank you to Stephen Leva and to Mike. Um, I'm so grateful to be here on the day that you're honored because um, you've always meant a lot to me as a friend and fellow writer. And I was thinking when I was listening to the comments that, um, you know, when you say to me that you really like my poems, <laughs> that means so much to me. And when some people say it, it means more, and it means more coming from you. I just feel it in, in a deeper, so thank you. And thank you so much for all the work you've done, continue to do. Um, I was also at the Washington March yesterday, and I, um, I love the connection between <coughs> making history and making art. Um, and I was thinking also the, the collection of voices yesterday it's a collection of voices that's a, it's actually a roar. It's a roar of voices, and today is a different kind of collection of voices. But that, the, what a literary magazine does when it brings people together for this one moment, because we'll never read together again like this, not like this. When it does that, it, it's a moment, but it's a moment that ripples out in a way that no, nothing else does. And um, So thank you so much for having this reading. And, and yesterday, I wanted to share two posters, if you haven't been to marches lately, and I know a lot of you are there, the posters are very much like reading poems, because they're just like t five words. And, and, you know, my favorite, I had many favorites, but I will share the one, which was Viva la Volva. <laughs> <laughs> I like the alliteration. It was classy. That was a classy one. Some word is classy. <laughs> but it was all one big great poem, up, up there sort of in the sky, you know. But, um, you know, it's a great exercise. I, I was given a sign, but it's a great exercise. And I just say, I encourage you to all think about what would your sign say? You know, if you had to make a sign, what would it say? Because you really have a big choice of tone and content and everything. And it seemed like a real, it was like imagination was alive and well yesterday and would carry us <coughs> forward. So, um, so my poem is um, also about my mother. So that kind of fits together with your mother, but in a very different way. Um, my mother was, um, has, she died a few years ago, but she uh, was diagnosed very suddenly with terminal cancer, went in for a different kind of x-ray. The radiologist said, put your affairs in order, bye-bye. Um, um, and she said, no, 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 no. So she was supposed to live three months, and I think she lived close to four years. Um, the result of which was life, was life, deep, deep life, but also um, a prison. It was, you know, in being imprisoned by this knowledge, but the life force that she showed was just tra transforming to me. And um, how to turn that into poetry and not prose, but poetry uh, was my question, was always my question. How to, you know, when you're blinded by news, and then you're blinded by treatments, when you're blinded, um, how can you see? And I feel, I have always go to poetry for my eyeballs, uh, you know, to see, to see in a way that's meaningful and transformative, and not in a way that's um, just what's on the surface. So this poem is about that, and it's, it's called The Wind Makes It Impossible. I wrote it um, looking out the window. I look, that's how I write everything. I start by looking out the window. But the wind um, became, I think, I didn't know it at the time. I really didn't know it till this morning. But I, I think the wind became a kind of metaphor for me, uh, for the experience of um, illness, which is a kind of wind you know, that sort of rears up and dies down, and, 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 and treatments, which are you know, sort of rear up, and they die down, and they're so improvised, and you have no you have no control over what this experience is except to find some way to see it. Um, and it, you can't see the wind. That was the, you know, you can't see it, but you can feel its effects on you and everything else. 
And so I think that was useful um, a way for me to to find some sort of voice. Does that make sense? You have to picture the wind. There's no wind today, um, but it's there. So here we go. Um, if you were going to read along, it's on page 32, but the, the way that, that I write the poems is to really compose them on the page, to, to use the page as a kind of improvisational um, space. Um, the wind makes it impossible. Whatever link to eternity broken, blown. I hear the bony thump of the garbage cans in the street. We're wondering how much longer my mother will live. She's lived three years rather than three months. Lived into her bodily suffering and carried it on her back. Three years of hard, hard labor. She wonders too. And in her darkest moment, everyone wants me to die now. I know what she is really saying. Why can't I live? The wind lives by its manifesto of nothingness and can make a tree sacrifice its branches. My mother, no eyelashes or hair, now her nails, her feet, after a hammering from the wind whistling through her veins. I am. Quality? I think of it all the time. Meaning? I hammer myself with that question. My body a tuning fork vibrating in the key of what? The path no sooner made, waves arching on the beach, is wiped clean. The wind is quiet now, off somewhere else, not charging in my ear, raking the lawn. The red maple shivers, but does not bend. Things remain as they are. Today my mother will think back to yesterday what the doctor didn't say, the PET scan, a monster of murky news, will whisper in her ear, play out her worst fear, the link to yesterday broken. When the wind dies down, we still hear the wind. In the bag of clothes my mother brings to me, the tablecloths, the scarves, the blue, imperishable wind. Thank you.